In this video, we're going to do a more advanced example of the disk method, and it's going to take us a little while, but I think it will be worth it to go through all the steps in detail. So we're being asked to find the volume of the solid form by rotating the area trapped between the line y equals 1 and the function f of x equals 4 minus 3x squared around the line y equals 1. Okay, so if you've been following along with these videos, you know that I like to do this in steps um, because then it really just helps us organize our thoughts here and how we're going to attack this problem. And the first step is always just sketch what's going on here. So we have uh, a few pieces of information. The first one is we have the line y equals 1, which is just a horizontal line. And this is also the axis of rotation. We're rotating around y equals 1. And we also have this function. And if you don't know how to sketch this function, well, I'll tell you what I do. What I do is first I'm going to look at this term minus 3x squared. And I'm going to know that notice that minus x squared is just an upside down parabola, something like this. And the 3 really doesn't make too much of a difference because if I multiplied all of these numbers here by 3, um, you know, it might make it a little bit skinnier, but who can really tell if I'm drawing the parabola perfectly to begin with anyways. So this is a perfectly good sketch of minus 3x squared. And then we'll just add the 4 on, right? This is the same thing if we just rearrange the actual, the way the function's given to us, minus 3x squared plus 4. Well, if we add 4, that just means we're going to take this minus 3x squared and hike it up by 4. Just add 4 to everything. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So it will look something like this. And now we can see that the area trapped by the function and that horizontal line is right here. And so we're going to take that and rotate that around the line y equals 1, and that's going to give us some weird sh solid shape, something that looks like uh, you know a really wonky looking uh, football, American football. Okay, so that's that's what we need to do. We need to find that volume uh, of that uh, what of the result when we rotate that area around the line y equals one. So step two is decide on a method, and uh, that's not really relevant here because I said that we're going to use the disk method. So that's already done for us. But once we get to future problems, harder problems, where we'll have to decide whether to use the the shell method, the washer method, or the disk method. For now, we're going to just do this as a disk method example. And once you decide on a method, I think it's a great idea to write down the formula for that method you're about to use. And in this case, this is the disk method formula when we're rotating around the x-axis or anything parallel to the x-axis. So this is for rotating around the x-axis or any horizontal line. And that's what we're doing. We're rotating around a horizontal line, so this is the right formula. And there's a few pieces we need to figure out. We need to figure out a, b, and r of x. So those are the next steps. We're going to find the bounds of integration, a and b. And in the disk method, the bounds of integration are always the leftmost and rightmost points of the area that's trapped. And those leftmost and rightmost points correspond exactly to when this function intersects this curve. Or, uh, or sorry, when this function intersects this horizontal line. So in order to find these intersection points, uh, which are the a and b we're looking for, we need to solve the equation 4 minus 3x squared equals 1. In other words, we're just setting the function equal to uh, this line, y equals 1, and the places, the x values where those are equal will tell us the, those intersection points. Okay, so we have to solve this simple equation. We subtract 1 over, that's 3 minus 3x squared equals 0. Factor out a 3, we get 3 times 1 minus x squared equals 0. Divide by 3, that's 1 minus x squared equals 0. And then let's bring this up here. Now I'm going to use a formula called the difference of squares to factor this. And the difference of squares says this factors to 1 plus x times 1 minus x. That's a formula you've uh, probably used a bunch of times in calculus. I know uh, we've used it in, in previous videos a bunch of times. So if you don't remember that factoring formula, just go look it up. And now we have our solutions. If x is minus 1, then this whole piece is 0. So that's a solution. And if x is 1, then this whole piece is 0. So that's a solution. So that tells us these intersection points happen at x is minus 1 and x is 1. And that's, that's exactly what we were after. 
because those intersection points are the leftmost and rightmost points of the area. So just to write this down, we have a equals minus 1 and b equals 1. Those are going to be our bounds of integration. Okay. So I went through that a bit fast, but it's really just a little bit of algebra. So if that's tricky for you, you know, pause the video, rewatch it. You'll be fine. Okay, so now comes to maybe the more interesting part, which is find r of x. And for that, we're going to look um, at a zoomed in picture of the graph so that we can really label things nicely. So to find r of x, you want to pick a, an arbitrary x value somewhere in between the area. So I'll just pick this x value here. And then I'm going to draw a line from the x-axis up to the edge of the area, the outer edge of that area. And um, what I'm going to also notice is, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to kind of overlap this with this bit. Um, uh, let me maybe try and make that a little bit nicer. Right there, this is our r of x that we're after. Why is that? Because if we took this line segment here in blue, labeled r of x, and we rotate it around the, the axis of rotation. So remember, we're rotating around this line right here. That's y equals 1. That's the thing we're rotating around. So if we take this thing in blue and we rotate it around, we're going to get something like this, I'm trying to do my best to draw a circle kind of coming out at us and back in, rotating around that line. And the radius of this circle is that line, that original line that I've drawn in blue, labeled r of x. That is the radius of the circle. So that's what we're looking for. We're looking for a function that tells us that radius. Okay, so let me back up and erase this circle here and kind of go back to our original plan of attack. So we have this r of x. That's what we're looking for. And how do we find it? Well, we're just going to start labeling things. So this whole distance here is f of x. Because by definition, this point right there is on the function, right? And it, for any x value, the, the f of x tells you the height of that point. f of x is here, right? It tells you the height of that point. But the height of that point is the exact same thing as the distance from the x-axis just up to that point, right? So in other words, this whole, um, this whole distance here that I've drawn from the axis out to the outer edge, that is f of x. And there's one more piece to be labeled here, and that's this piece right here, which is just 1. That's the distance from the x-axis up to y equals 1, which is just 1. OK, so how are we going to find r of x? Well, it's actually quite easy now. r of x is the entire function value, the entire distance from the x-axis out to the function, minus 1. Right? If we take this orange bit and we subtract the red bit, we take f of x and subtract 1, what's left over? It's exactly r of x that we were looking for. Okay, so I hope you see that. I hope that um, makes sense to you. That's how we're, we're, just by drawing out this simple diagram here, that's how we're going to find this, or that's what helped us find this radius function. Okay, so coming back up here, we, we found r of x. r of x was equal to f of x minus 1, which in this case is 4 minus 3x squared minus 1. So that's 3 minus 3x squared. It's just the function minus 1. All right, so we're done with that step. And the problem is pretty much over at this point. The very last thing we need to do is just plug our pieces into the formula and solve. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have this integral from a, which is minus 1, to b, which is 1, of pi. And then r of x is 3 minus 3x squared, squared dx. So all I did was take a and b and r of x and plug them into that formula. That's how I got this. OK, and now the problem is really over. The, the rest is just busy work. Solving this integral will be fairly easy and straightforward and really just amounts to doing some busy work. The hard part is completely over, and the hard part is setting up this function carefully to sketch it, find the bounds of integration, and make sure we have the right radius formula. All right, so that being said, let's go through the busy work. We'll take a couple minutes to do that and just solve this integral out so we have ourselves a final answer. 
All right, so let's make some room here to do that. All right, so this integral here is going to be equal to uh, the first step we're going to do is just square this out. So foil out that term, and that's going to give us 9 minus 18x squared plus 9x to the fourth dx. And now that pi is just a constant, so we'll factor that out. So it's going to be pi times this integral. And now we can just do the antiderivative power rule. So this is going to be pi times, let's see, that will be 9x minus 18x cubed over 3 plus 9x to the fifth over 5. So that's just using the antiderivative power rule. And we have to evaluate this between minus 1 and 1. So let's go ahead and plug those in. So this is going to be pi times. And now we're going to plug in uh, 1. So this is 9 times 1 minus 18 times 1 cubed over 3 plus 9 times 1 to the fifth over 5. So that's plugging in 1. And then we have to subtract and plug in minus 1. So that's going to be 9 times minus 1 minus 18 times minus 1 cubed over 3 plus 9 times minus 1 to the fifth over 5. Okay, and I did tell you this was going to be busy work, and it is, because now we're just kind of in the muck here solving all the, uh, you know, computing these numbers. And I'm going to use a little trick. I'm going to notice that 9 times 1 is the same thing as minus, this minus sign is going to distribute, minus 9 times minus 1. That's a minus minus, so that's going to be a positive 9. So we have two positive 9s here. Same thing happens with this 18. It's minus 18, and it's minus, minus, minus 18 over 3. So these two terms are actually both uh, minus 18 over 3. And then finally, we have uh, 9 fifths, and this is a minus, minus 9 fifths, so those are both uh, positive 9 fifths. So there's some symmetry in this problem that I'm just taking advantage of to make the computation easier. And so let's see, we're almost done here. We'll just combine all those terms. We have 9 plus 9 is 18. We have 18, minus 18 thirds plus uh, minus 18 thirds is going to be, um, well, 18, 18 thirds is 6. So this is minus 6 minus 6, that's minus 12. And then plus, we have 9 fifths and 9 fifths, that's 18 fifths. Okay really close to the finish line here. So this is going to be 18 minus 12, which is 6. If we put that over 5, that's 30 over 6. So this is 30 over 6, or sorry, 30 over 5 plus 18 over 5. And then finally, we get our answer, which is 48 pi over 5. And that is our final answer. Okay, so it took us a while to get there, but uh, in the end, we got through all the steps, did the busy work. That is the volume we were looking for. And in the next videos, uh, in the upcoming videos, we'll do an example rotating around the y-axis, and then we'll move on to other met methods like uh, washer method and shell method. Okay, see you then.